And for my family, and that house had three bedrooms and two bathrooms and sat on a big wooded lot in a suburb of Chicago. And this, this fish cost the same amount of money. And there I was, the kid who worked his way through school, now buying a, a fish equal to that. And I felt that was an indecent thing to do and I shouldn't do that. I, I didn't have the right, I wasn't raised that way to spend that kind of money on, a, on any animal or anything or anything for myself. I don't deserve that. And uh, it was a very difficult decision, emotionally, to give myself that kind of pleasure, uh, that kind of uh, reward for working as hard as I have all my life, and to give myself that reward. So we were, we went to Moma Tarles afterwards, Ray and I and my wife, Sheila. And there was a gentleman there I didn't know who was an agent and, and dealer and breeder. And I pulled him aside. I don't even think Ray knows, and I'm not sure I even told Sheila the story. So I'm sharing this with you, actually, for the first time. Uh, and I asked him, what should I do? Here I'm buying a fish that cost double the price of anything I've ever purchased. What should I do? Not only double the price, it's like four to six times more than I've ever paid for a fish. And he said, did you take a picture of her? And I said, yes. He said, if it's depressing you and stressing you so much, go home. Take the picture you have, have the photograph enlarged, you put it on your wall, and when you want to see the fish, just look at the photograph on your wall, and that should satisfy you of owning the fish. And I said, you know, that's what I'm going to do. That's the decision. So that night, I had a sleepless night, tossed and turned all night. I said, just, just can't spend that much money, not for something for myself. And those people watching this who have fish know the fish could die that, that day. The fish could die in transit. I may never get it home alive. I may get it home, and the first day I get it home, she develops some kind of issue. She runs into the wall and bangs her nose, and she has costi, and we don't find that out, or she has some disease, and we lose this beautiful fish that, we, that I loved. So that was a reasonable decision until the morning, until after breakfast. We drove out of the parking lot, uh, not intending to buy this fish, going to a fish show. Ray was driving, I was sitting in the front seat. We stopped at a stoplight and there was like a pause in the conversation. I said, Ray, call Terrazzo and ask him to call this breeder. And I'm not sure you should know who it is. He was a very fine gentleman. And uh, I said, tell him I want the fish. And he sold me the fish at the price regardless of what it did in the show, which was really incidental. And uh, she's here. And when I look at her now, I know why I bought her. Of all the fish coming out, and I've probably got at this day right here amongst the greenhouses and the ponds, probably 40 to 50 fish that I own. She is just overwhelming. And I think those people who raise fish, who own fish, uh, sometimes buy fish for show, sometimes buy fish because they love them, uh, sometimes they may buy them because they want to show off to their neighbor or their friends or win their trophy at the next uh, uh, koi show. I bought this fish because she's breathtakingly beautiful. She's a painting. She's a masterpiece um, to me.